and welcome to Sinomania for the first full week of March 2007. China Syndrome or Hongbao Bounce. We look at the why in the China stock yo-yo. And new IPOs. Yes, Chinese companies are still listing, although mostly on overseas exchanges. The surprise drop in Chinese stocks last week continues to reverberate. Last Tuesday, the Shanghai Exchange was topic of the day. Journalists and talking heads around the world struggled to explain how communist China's stock markets gave the biggest and most powerful markets in the world, those in the United States and Europe, a cold. In America, lefty bloggers and progressive talk radio was convinced it was a sign of Bush and Republicans selling out the USA to China. Most analysts, particularly in the China threat camp, blamed the whole thing on China's ruthless authoritarian government, determined to crack down on free markets with a capital gains tax and deliberate dumping of state-owned shares to cause a global market crash. But even the chief economist of Morgan Stanley could find no substantiation to the many rumors circulating around Shanghai and Shenzhen on February 27. The idea that China engineered the drop in prices is based on a surge in selling of so-called G-shares by local government entities under China's state-owned asset commission. These are reform shares formerly controlled by the state and now tradable. It is true G-shares experienced their highest volume in over a year on the 27th. But that selling alone does not explain the dramatic drops on the A-share indexes which are closed to non-Chinese investors. In the, in the week before the start of China's week-long national holiday for Chinese New Year, stock prices accelerated rapidly and the number of new trading accounts swelled, breaking all records. While the actual number of shareholders in China remains unclear, there are anywhere from 72 to 100 million individual securities trading accounts in China. The high estimate surpasses the number of shareholders in the United States. The Chinese New Year holiday saw a dramatic increase in consumer spending and giving hongbao, red envelopes filled with cash to family and friends. Even among poor farmers, according to Chinese news reports, it was not uncommon to give away a thousand more yuan in hongbao this year. Over 250 million people traveled within China during the holiday to visit their families and take vacations. Retail sales, tourism revenue, bank card transactions, restaurant receipts, flat screen TV sales all soared to new heights with double digit growth and tens of billions of dollars in value. And add in all the Hongbao cash and you can see there was an unusual spending spree among normally frugal Chinese. Like January after Christmas in America, millions and millions of Chinese found themselves cash poor and in debt when markets reopened after the holiday. On Monday, Shanghai and Shenzhen both reached record highs, only to drop through the floor on Tuesday. Was Tuesday's sell-off the result of China's first big spending binge? And if so, what does it say about the Chinese government's hope to increase domestic consumption? It's important to remember also that many gurus on emerging markets such as Mark Mobius and Mark Faber anticipate a major decline this year, perhaps as much as 20%. I've been talking about it since January, but even after last week's performance, Chinese markets were not down as far as they were on February 5th and still remain higher overall since the year began. Hong Kong and Singapore continue to attract Chinese companies with expansion plans. Coming up this month or early next quarter are Jiangsu Eastern Shipyard along the Yangtze, northwest of Shanghai, plans a smaller Singapore listing and hopes to raise around 65 million US dollars to expand facilities to make very large crude carriers for Germany. Golden Cattle Group of far western Xinjiang has 8,000 head of Holstein cattle and dominates the Chinese market for cattle sperm, embryos, and calves. Golden Cattle wants to raise 100 million US dollars with the Hong Kong listing. China's dairy industry is growing, so this could be a company to watch. Two new retail plays, Bell Holdings, a national shoe store chain with over 2,400 stores, is still on for a Hong Kong debut and might raise several hundred million dollars. An end time department store group of fast moving Zhejiang province below Shanghai plans to sell up to 25% of the company to raise money for expansion plans that will take in time into other provinces. In time is a higher end retail outlet with five stores and plans for many more. And look for Xinhua Finance Media on NASDAQ this Thursday, March 8. I'll see you next week.